Hi, I'm Dave. Hi, I'm Andy. I'm Kirk. Okay, so Kirk, you've asked us to come here. We're at the uh, Red Line and Stevenage. A uh, good little live little venue here. Um, but you sort of said you came up with an idea for us to do a video, a series of videos. Why are we here? Oh, okay, yeah. So, uh, well, two weeks ago, I was doing a, a walk in the Hertfordshire countryside, listening to Alice in Chains' facelift, and I just came up with this idea. I'm approaching 40 in September as the editor of Screen Glass Repeat. Wouldn't, oh, it be nice great? There. Wouldn't it be great if I could interview <laughs> five of my musical idols and oh, then maybe film it and the entertainment could be whether I'm successful or I fail. Um, so I've come up with this wish list but I was thinking that it won't be enough for just me, I need two other people so the technical capabilities of you and definitely yep. as the music All video right. director. Um, Bit of a there. No, I, I certainly think that you, you've, you've got the technical know-how um, and you could make this into something more okay. professional like a YouTube series. That makes sense. Uh, Andy, great personality, musician, veteran of the Hertfordshire music scene. <laughs> You're making him sound so old right uh, now. One out of three. I'd <laughs> like that. Yeah. No, I, th I think you. Hello, it's like nice personalities. Just like that. <laughs> It'd be a good antidote <laughs> to me because I'm quite affable and uh, sometimes speak continuously. Um, so I, I just came up with this idea. Let's film it. How easy is it to meet our idols, to interview them, essentially? And aim high. That was the first thing I was thinking, right. you know, why not go for Robert Smith of the Cure or Who? Mike Patton of Faith No More, you know, these legends of right. rock and metal. Um, so, does that excite you? What, what do you think about that? So, we, what, so you, we're all doing your five or we do our own five? Or? I mean, I was, originally I was thinking my five, but maybe if we choose five each. Okay. I don't say that, how long is the documentary going to be? That's going to be a long documentary, isn't it? I mean, we're not into segments or... uh, I suppose what we could probably do is you could either do it as a big documentary at the end and try and say the whole journey but I suppose it'd be more interesting if we break it into like, like the journey of us trying to do it so maybe over a series of weeks or whatever yeah. Yeah. might work and see how we get on so if we do five so we've got five each that's 15, <laughs> 15 people musical idols to interview and do you think we'll actually get all 15 uh, already <laughs> some of them some of them I, I think would be almost impossible okay but that's the challenge isn't it i think our viewers would probably find that more interesting than the interview would you would you <laughs> <laughs> you know the, the, what i really want see, to do is panicking, yeah. introduce the, the viewers to a side of the music industry they're not aware of so most record okay. labels will use publicists pr companies They'll handle the marketing campaigns if they've got an album coming out or a tour. So, as the editor of Screen Last Repeat, I do have some contacts to deal with some of it, especially the major metal labels. He's got a foot up on us then already, hasn't well, he? pretty much. Yeah. Cent yeah. Century yeah. Media, Nuclear Blast, the little Rolodex, Records. Sunny, little Rolodex. So is this like a competition then? Are you just trying to win this competition? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, if you wanted to win it, you could just set yourself some medium, it it, some, some medium fame targets, couldn't you? Yeah. If you're aiming high, you've got like fucking Marilyn Manson on your list or something like that. Okay. Then best of luck. I don't think you're going to win. <laughs> I'm just, just going to do five meet and greets. There you go. Got to film it. You've definitely got to film it for our viewers. Film it, yeah. But yeah. you do five meet and greets, then I win, don't I? Buy it. Buy a yeah, ticket. you just buy a, buy a ticket, do a meet and greet. No, oh, come on, no. You, you could so you're not allowed to do meet and greets. You could just wait outside the fucking venue, couldn't you? And, and yeah. get a signed. CD or... So that doesn't count? No. Not allowed, okay, we're not allowed to do that. Right, I don't fine. think, no. Um, so what, what, what's the ruling or what's classed as a, as a success of this Meet Your Idol? What okay, do we have to so it, I suppose it's Interview Your Idol. So so it's more like, it, we've got to interview, does that have to be face-to-face -face or yeah, video? Yeah, it, it's got it's got to be visual. Um, so either face-to-face -face at a gig or somewhere pre-arranged or on Zoom or Teams. I think that would count, wouldn't it? Having a yeah. conversation, you know, say with like... Bruce Dickinson of Iron Maiden or whatever, that, that would be, I think that would count as a success. And I stand to benefit anyway, because if any people on your list come under the purview <coughs> of Extreme Metal, Prague or Dark Alternative, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the interview for, for my publication chance. anyway. Fair enough. So, right. yep. uh, hey, okay. I don't care if no one watches it, I just wanna meet my heroes. <laughs> so. so how long have we got to come up with our five then? Uh, I mean, until I finish this, Until I finish this drink. I assume it's not something you can just say, is it, instinctively? Oh, these are my five! I think I, I've got... I would say there's a few people that would be an obvious one, but I probably need a little bit of a drink and then... Uh, I'll probably make a, a roughest. You like, seem, I've, got one, I've got one or two in mind, but yeah... You, you like seem Dave. quite taciturn about this, are you... I, I don't sense I don't that you're buying into it. Yeah. Are you buying... 
quite a bit reserved. Are you buying into this? Is this something? Oh, you can give get it a go. At? I mean, this is out of my league, of, out of my realm of <laughs> you know, my comfort zone of uh, things I've done before and you know things I've been involved in. But that, yeah, that, that could be like probably the best aspect of it because all right, I've got a bit of a one foot in the door with some of the labels. You direct music videos. You're a YouTuber. So okay, I got, got it. For I, don't listen to anybody, I don't listen to anybody that anybody else listens to. No, exactly. I mean, you, you yeah. listen to doom metal and nothing. After but you've got, if you've got the obscure vans, there's probably a better chance of actually speaking to them rather than the commercial people yeah. that I would probably end up picking, which are probably. And I'm, I'm, I might add to my list, you know. Like the likes of Iron Maiden. People in, in the realms that you know people are going to know rather than you know my doom heroes, for example. But yeah. 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 This. Uh, this Go away and have a little think right. about it. Go on, you, let's you, go, so I've, let's I've go, got a pub here. Go. I've written my five down. So, so you, you already to... know. We, okay, I need, I need to go get a drink. I, I warn no. you, this is very ambitious. Because I think we've got to aim high. People are going to find this interesting. They're going to want to know, can you get an interview with Robert Smith? Just giving that away. Robert Smith of the Cure. It's already probably, selling it. Probably All right, let's, let's go get another drink and then work out a lesson. We'll be back in a second. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so right, we're back. We have our supposed five. I'm pretty, I think I'm comfortable with us. We did say when we were off camera that we can't pick like really easy bands that we reckon we could easily do. Mm -hmm. So we had to give ourselves a little bit of a stretch. So we've and got that. We, we've got to keep these people interested, aren't we? The more famous, yeah. the better. And the concept is going to be definitely over the next however many weeks. We, now we've said, I think we've said over 12 weeks because it yeah. works out roughly about six months to give us time to, to do this. Um, you're going to see us uh, in our attempts to, to make this happen. So that's what we kind of agreed now. I'm happy to kick it off with my five and tell you why I picked them if you want. Yeah, yeah, let's hear it. Okay. So, and this was the important thing. So the, we, we said that these are our idols and the reason behind it. So you can't just pick something that's an idol to everyone. It has to be a, something that is also an idol to you for whatever reason. That was the other thing. Because there are obvious idols. You go, oh, Bruce Dickinson, he's an idol. Not specifically for me. Yeah, I mean, if you're into Iron but, Maiden, then obviously he's, he's a metal guy, yeah. isn't it? But also, just for those listening, there's a bit of a background wind at the moment because there has been a storm and we're still getting a little bit of that in there. So this background noise, I apologise. There's not a lot we can do about it. Can't control the wind, unfortunately. But uh, what we got? So I've got Rob Flynn as my first one. Um, did you know, I, I nearly had him on my list. Did you? <laughs> it was between him and number five. Yeah. And I'm pleased that you went for him because... Needs Rob Flynn. I love watching his, I, his podcast. And... Well, it's for me. It's the fact that yeah, he's a very he's very into his social media. As far as there's not many other metal guys that embrace social media as much as he does. Mm -hmm. So I think there was an opportunity from there's more accessibility from him from that point. Yeah. So that was one of the reasons out of the idols I picked that I kind of narrowed him into my top five. But also from the point that he's had to go through so so many lineup changes. Uh, not as many as Kane. But he's done a lot of lineup changes. If no one's heard of K, go check him out. Um, but K with a K. K with a K. But as in Harry Kane, you're talking about Spurs, right? Now. With an I in it. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. Yeah. Like Old Rage. Aren't they? Rage, yeah, from. Yeah, they're good, I like them. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen him a few times. He's right? had so many. And Rage is. Oh, like, really? We can sidetrack it now, but Rage has had. He's literally the only original member left, but he's replaced his whole band. I know the German rotated. heavy metal band, Rage. No. We've, we're sidetracking now. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Rob anyway, Flip, Rob Flynn, 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 legend, legend. No fucking and for reason for my, I love it. For my love idol, the reason he's in there is because he's <coughs> kind of reminds me of like Dave Mustaine. He's had to go through the ringer. He's adapted with changes. He's tried new things when he went off and did uh, the Burning Red uh, Supercharger. Don't mention that album. <laughs> I like that album. Oh, can you I like Supercharger? It's... it's a fucking new metal album. Well, Burning Red was probably closer to yeah, me now. But Supercharger was then trying to go, they almost went hard rock with that one a little bit too much. With that. They, and this they is been Machine Head we're talking about. Exactly. Yeah, but I liked it. Well, so Burns good, didn't they? They have yeah. an experimental stage and he throwed, go throw back to form, didn't they? They came back to form. With Hang on, Slayer had a new metal stage. True, yeah. What was it called? Diabolos in Musica? Music? Yeah, I remember buying it. Stain of Mind, great song. Yeah, Very new metal. Which is the one after? Um, Oh, God hates us all. Yeah. Track number one on that is amazing. That See, that's when they went back to core. Yeah. Okay, so that's why Rob Flynn's in there. I think okay. he's an idol just because of his relentlessness to drive forward his back. Machine fucking hurt. Exactly. Fucking hurt. <laughs> uh, second one you guys probably won't know is a guy called Alec Bartar. Now, he's Ooh. not. 
that well known. Uh, he is in YouTube circles, but not really is he. Like a main. jazz fusion musician, I suppose. He's an Indonesian fingerstyle guitar player. So the reason I put him as an idol is he's built his YouTube channel up from obviously nothing to five million subscribers. Um, he will get anywhere between when he drops a video, he'll drop a video maybe once or twice a month, and he will hit a million views within two days. Oof. So he's got a very high viewership. What was um, his style? Did you say? Sorry. What's his, his finger style? style. So he's an acoustic player, finger style player. And he did the entire Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen, uh, including vocal melody, bass, guitar, piano line, everything on. The top finger style guitar himself. Ah, oh, so he, did he do them as separate channels? Nope. Mix it. Oh, somebody played it. Played live. it there with what? a little, and he played it with a little Zoom recorder in his house. He was, a, he, awesome? he was, a, <laughs> he was a forklift driver. Yeah. And he was doing this, and now he can basically support his family by doing these this YouTube channel. And I, I idolise him for the fact that he's gone through that channel. I don't always like everything he puts out. I will still oh, query it because I react. I do reactions to him and. He's just literally the day that we're filming this, he's dropped a new song and I, I listened to it and I didn't like it. Oh, okay. But I gave feedback and I was like, it's not one of my, I don't really think it's one of his best. He's He detracted from what he normally does. He tried something new and it did, for me it didn't work. But it's the fact that he has gone through this journey of starting out a YouTube channel as a forklift driver yeah. and playing a little acoustic guitar to play to one to five million subscribers. Success story, though, isn't Big it? success story, so I'd love to speak to him about that. So um, he, 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 just to check, is he your musical idol, though? Yes, so he's yes. an idol for what he's done and what he's yeah. achieved. So that's why I would idolise him from his... It's admiration, isn't it? It's an admiration for that. Uh, anyone that's watched my YouTube channel when I've talked about my top uh, 10 <laughs> Finger style guitar players, he wasn't my number one. Ooh. <laughs> which absolutely, my, the Alipers, which are his fan base, really didn't like that. He even but, has a name for his fan base. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, Lucas Striganoli, uh, Striganoli plays uh, Finger Star. He's an amazing Finger style guitar player and technically is better, but he was well known for it. Right. So it's something where he's already been in that industry. He's a strong guitar player. He wasn't some forklift truck driver. He picked up an acoustic guitar and. So this man's had an incredible journey. Yeah. It shows throws. that determination of someone who started out with nothing and really gone forward with it. How easy do you think he'd be to interview? He's a YouTuber, he must be approachable. Uh, so he doesn't do interviews, what? he's not on social media. <laughs> Great stuff! Uh, <laughs> he has one, we can't really find out any of his social medias, they seem to be done by other people, so he doesn't do them himself. And he's never been interviewed by anyone, and he refuses to do them. So there's a huge challenge there. Yeah. You've set the bar very high. That, that <laughs> weirdly is probably going to be the hardest one to do. Yeah, out of all of them. Yeah, he's, he's not approachable. Nobody knows his real social media no. channels. So no one knows how to contact he's him. He has no music, contact. Which doesn't matter in the, in but he does language. now have a publisher. Oh, for Believe okay. Music in Indonesia. Yeah. So there is a route in through there, I think. Uh, can you imagine the traction you get for Dave Does Digital? If I got that one. That's his, that's his channel, Dave Does Dave, Digital. That's one of the many channels. <laughs> <laughs> Diversify, that's it. Okay, God, I can't believe I'm only on number three. Number three, uh, J.S. Clayton. So, pitch shifter? Pitch pitch shifter. shifter. Yep, yeah. so singer of Pitch Shifter. Um, I guess I love the guy's attitude. I love his down to earthness. I'm a, a massive fan of Pitch Shifter. Uh, yeah. But I came into them quite late. I didn't come into them when they were in their real heavy hardcore like the, the other stuff's more like old grindcore, old industrial yeah. grindcore sort of stuff i got into them when they sort of moved into the album like deviant and then yeah. pickshifter.com and then psi um, it's more like the prodigy with nine inch nails yeah and it's chemical brothers and ministry all combined heavy it? guitars and all that sort yeah. of stuff but when they but i still love what they did with the industrial and i like the fact that they went from one complete if you put the two bands next to each other, or their, their albums, their early stuff to their later stuff next to it, you would go, they're completely different bands. Yeah, definitely. It's almost like they got halfway through their career and went, Silent, let's just do something different. And just went in a completely different direction as a band. Same name. Is he... Uh, get the same name, but they are the same, all the same guys in the band and the kind of stuff. Is, is he a Londoner? Uh, I know he's English. Hey. He's from Nottingham. Oh, okay. Uh, so they're Nottingham he's based, Midlands. and unfortunately, I'm not actually sure where he's based. I know his brother, which is the bass player, he's uh, LA based. But I'm not sure about JF Clayton where he is. But um, again, he's a guy that's fairly social media orientated. And again, with someone, for me, I've always been a Pitch Shifter fan. I continue to be a Pitch Shifter fan. And always when they, they do a little reunion show, go and check them out. Uh, and it's one of the guys I'd love to ask questions about because of his musical industry background. 
their thought process, the recordings. It's one of that's why I would idolise them for that. Yeah, I used to, I used to read a lot of his interviews in Kerrang magazine. They were, for a while, the UK's seminal mm. heavy band, weren't they, in the late nineties? And uh, I think his dad used to be a. I'm sure his dad was a Church of England pastor. Right. Yeah, so he's definitely an interesting He's an right? interesting guy to get to find out about. Yeah. Uh, last two for me. So the next one is band. Now, I'd like to speak to the whole band, if I could, but I would settle for any member of the band, I guess, from this competition point of view. Yep. Uh, but the band is The Warning. Uh, so it's a Mexican free piece. Uh, <laughs> you know, The Warning. The warning. Sounds like an, like an English yeah, English boy band, isn't it? Yeah, that, is that the boy band? No, so uh, Mexican three piece band. Now, uh, <laughs> the, thi- the thing that people know about them is that they did Enter Sandman was their YouTube. So when they were like ten years old, they played Enter Sandman. What? Uh, between I think one was ten, one was eleven, one was twelve. I think so. Danny the singer was twelve, was the oldest. Uh, Pal, who's the drummer, was eleven, and Ali. Oh no, Ali was nine on bass. The bass is bigger than she is in the video, and they played Enter oh, Sandman. Oh, they're, they're all girls, are they? They're all girls. Um, and since then, they, they did. They got pushed. It was her, their dad manages them. They got pushed towards like going out and doing record things when they were like like eleven and twelve, and they were doing like showcases for record industries <laughs> with their own material. This is stuff they had written, not someone written for them. They were doing at eleven and twelve years old songs, and I've listened to some of them. They actually have got some really nice structures. Technical as they can play Enter Sandman. As they're well. now. In their like late, they're 18, 19, 28, Past that area. Past they're eight ancient now, but they're on their album number three at the moment. Right. They've had two EPs out, three albums, and you're like, they're 19 years and 20 years old, for God's sake. I wish How? I could have that much talent. And they're at the <laughs> moment, they're out on tour with Hailstorm and Ooh. Pretty Re- Pretty Reckless Tour. They're I mean, on the open Both band. of those bands have got great vocalists as well, haven't they? So they're out there at the moment. They I need to check Great out. attitudes. Good warning. Yeah, um, that. And again, I just think from what my, the reason I idolise them is how it's Mexican. Yeah. Mexico. It's the fact that they are that committed to what they do. Yeah. They're that driven. They put all their effort and all their talent into it and that they just show what they can do about their own songwriting. I guess it gives you inspiration yeah. as well, doesn't it? You know, to see it does somebody a lot start. You've seen, have you, I'm, I'm right in thinking you've probably seen their journey from the first couple of years, haven't you, to what they've evolved into? I came into them only about two, three years ago. Oh, okay. So I came in there quite late, and it, it was someone actually recommended I check them out as a reaction video. Mm-hmm. And I went, it was the first time they recommended me was a song called Dust to Dust, uh, and it was really cool. It was the drummer that was singing, and it had a really cool vibe to it, and I went, really like this, and then, of course, that everyone was on my YouTube channel going, you've got to check out this song, you've got to check out oh, this song. I think I've heard this. Do they, are they dressed like Amazonian warriors? No. Well, okay, no. <laughs> I just love your rap. There, there, no, there was a song that came on on YouTube. You know, That's in between videos. Video. That's a different in, video. Yeah, and it, and it was this band. And it, it sounded like Sepultura, Roots era. But they were all dressed up as warriors. I have no so idea what you've been them. watching. Right, okay, yeah. <laughs> nothing pornographic you're sure, in that. You're sure that wasn't something you just dreamt of the other night? <laughs> yeah, that would have but been yeah, fantastic. So that, that's yeah. that one. And my final yeah. one is Sally Erna from Singer from Godsmack. 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 Oh, God, they, they were... They're still they like big. one of the hate, most hated bands they are, I mean, in England? They had no following, did they? But in America, they sold millions. They, the problem is they got put into the old a classic hard rock, arena rock sort of thing, and then people started criticising them for not have, being very riff-driven. They were just very chord progressive bass. They weren't really like technical riffs. I'm guessing it's like Alice in uh, Chains, isn't it? They're named after they, Alice in Chains. Yeah, so they've got the they've got an element of grunge in their style. They're kind of a grunge hard rock. They they lean quite heavily towards like Led Zeppelin roots and mm-hmm. stuff like that in there. But the reason I picked Sully is because he started out as drummers and he was a drummer in a band and they were constantly trying to find a vocalist and he got sick and tired and he took over vocal roles and then He's kind of moved forward, he plays guitar live for them as well, so he backs up and does secondary rhythm guitar and even takes leads occasionally. Uh, does drum battles with the other drummer on stage. Um, he's written two solo albums, yeah. all the instrumentation. He's like basically the heavy metal Phil Collins in my head. It's just yeah, he does that kind I, of I mean, I know he's, he's, he's definitely talented, isn't he? I saw him on the, a thrash metal documentary, so I think he grew up listening to a lot of the heavier stuff yeah. as well, didn't he? So he, he came across really well on that. I thought, oh, this, this guy... Yeah. He's, he's really sound, you know, I'd like to hear more from him, so... So he's mine, and that's yeah. my five. It's taken us about half an hour to get to we'll it, but there you go. <laughs> we'll be editing this. <laughs> well, how much we can edit that down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, that's me done. Mr. Okay. See you later. Right. <laughs> right, well, 
mine are sort of more well known I think in the in the arena of uh, heavy metal and they're just people I admire and fans of their bands and their music over the last 40 years rather than like you David people you admire for their sort of journey in the, in the world of music and, and what they've achieved and what they've done and what they've brought to brought to the world um, when Kirk said aim high I think I probably have on this one oh, well, uh, Steve one. Harris yeah, I imagine those yeah, okay, yeah. no chance, man. Yeah. No chance. No, I reckon he could. I reckon Steve Harris would be open. You reckon? Yeah. I think if you explain what we're doing, he's the sort of guy, I mean, because he, what's, what's the other band? Those white lions? Has he got a line, um, it's got British great, line. British line. British line. He's got a line, team, he's got a, uh, like an I mean, the guy plays, team. yeah, the guy goes out and plays football for people. He's got yeah. his British lions and he always does, like, catch up with fans and stuff like that. So yeah. I reckon if you approach him in the right way and explain why we're doing this, he actually might be like down for it and just be yeah. like, yeah, all right. I, 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 I can give, give him a history as well, which I will say now as well. You know, Iron Maiden were the first band I ever heard in the way of heavy metal. Top of the Pops, 1982, on, you know, on the radio, yeah. Top 40 Countdown. Mm. Took me power notes of Woolworths. <laughs> One pound notes, yeah. Four, remember four, them. Number of the Beast, seven inch vinyl. It was red, yeah. awesome cover. Have you still got it? Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's get it on the wall. Man. Yeah, and yeah. then that's where it started for me. Awesome. Four years ago. Cool. So Maiden. Steve, you know, yeah. early Maiden. Everyone loves early Maiden. There's a certain point in the career where I won't be telling this to Steve Harris when we get to, if I get to meet him, but there's certain periods, long periods of time, unfortunately, <laughs> where they weren't <laughs> that great. He is going to see this. That's the problem. Oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> if you get an interview, if with we're him, lucky. and he watches the documentary. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean. Maiden, legends, world legends, everyone knows Iron Maiden, but you know, I freely admit there's albums that I probably haven't given enough time to listen to, um, albums I don't like, periods of their career I don't like, mm. things have happened in the career that I don't like, but legends, are Yeah, I mean, we've got everything they've ever released on vinyl, limited edition picture discs, all this kind of thing, you know, you know, the quality, you know, okay. they're, they're, they're instrumental in, in the formation of, of the world of every month that we all, we're all fans of. Definitely, especially on Flash Metal. Yeah. I think that'll be a, yeah, I think it's achievable. Yeah. Right. I'm not too sure. I'm yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll take a side bet on that yeah. one. Yeah. You say am I, but we'll, we'll see. It's probably the highest, other than this Alec Barto who doesn't do interviews. Yeah. Yeah. Right, the next one is um, Barney Greenaway, vocalist of UK metal band Napalm Death. Napalm Death. Again. You suffer but why? Yeah, that was Spider Yeah, Spider Yeah. I mean, back in the day, you, you, you read the Kerrang magazine, you see, you know, there's adverts in there. But, you know, one of the first, I think, E rate releases, I bought Scum with a sticker on it that said $3.99, pay three ninety nine or less for. You bought it on the, when it came out? Yeah, Scum. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Barney Green, I was obviously in that I one, respect. but. You know, what, growing up, we've sort of. Um, you know, Iron Maiden and ACDC and Metallica. Napalm Death was a bit of a departure, especially that early stuff. <laughs> but okay. Barney Greenway's introduction to the band with the um, Harmony Corruption album, which I think is yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely yeah. brilliant. You know, again, the, the, uh, the hardcore fans didn't really like it and they got a lot of slack, uh, a lot of stick for that. But yeah, again, just a big fan of the band. Somebody who I think is, would be a, a nice guy to sit down with and have a beer with, you know. And he'd, he'd have right. a lot to say. He's an intelligent man. You know, you can just tell from his lyrics and, and you know. Yeah. yeah. He had lyrics. Absolutely. He did all sound like school. No idea. The, the, yeah. the last album was fantastic. I made our. I think we had it at number eleven on our top forty albums of 2020. Really experimental. Yeah. Great band. Again, we've discussed this before, Kirk. That there's you know, Napalm Death, Napalm Death, Napalm Death, and then there's Big Gap. Well, I didn't listen to them or have their albums. Maybe guess late nineties when they turned into a bit more like a helmet groove metal type band. Probably, yeah. They're, they're a bit experimental at times as well, you know, sort of ambient sounds and everything, which is not something I'm a huge fan of. But again, the majority of the Napalm Death catalog, absolutely love, especially when you go back to the sort of nineties, early two thousand stuff. But so influential, yeah. extreme metal. Yeah. Cool. Just think it'd be nice. I'd like to sit down and have a beer with him and, and, and talk about his career. Definitely. Um, another band from, from way back that, you know, the British band is uh, Angel Witch. They didn't get the recognition they deserved back in the uh, 
New Wave of British Heavy Metal Days. Lars, I don't think I, I, think I have ever heard them. Lars has mentioned a few times, hasn't he? Metallica Probably, drummer. I think yeah. he said they're an influence. Yeah. Of mm. death, oh, Chuck yeah. Children of Death, I know yeah. he's them, so. Yeah, I think, I think um, you know, they, they were sort of kicking around the London scene with Iron Maiden and, <coughs> and, and the like. And they, you know, the story goes they had a, an EMI guy come down. But they played a terrible show. They were drunk or something, and they, they never, never got, never got the recognition they deserved. Don't um, drink and play music. There you go. Especially not technical music. Yeah, the, the, the we've got an A&R guy coming <laughs> <Yeah>. down. <laughs> debut album is still, you know, recognised and um, classic. You know, the classic, and people cover it, and they've been sort of reissued with extra tracks, which I've all got as well. But. My favourite Angelwitch period are the two albums I've done with a, uh, a vocalist by the name of Dave Tatum. When's this then? Because I know that debut album's 1980, so when when did he, what? Uh, 84 and 85, Oh, I okay, think. mid-80s, yeah. yeah. And then I think shortly after that, Kevin Abel sort of walked away from the music scene, relocated to America, got different right. lineups together, and, and you know, in recent years, you know, Angelwitch have sort of uh, reformed and taken off. But the Dave Tatum albums, I absolutely love. It's a slightly different style. I think he's a great vocalist. Kevin Hayborn doesn't play that material live. I mean, he did sort of in that sort of period, just before and after, you know, Dave Tatum's involvement. Um, you know, that, that sort of period, that two or three year period, has kind of been forgotten about by you know, the, the man himself. I think that gives you, I mean, that, that's a good reason to interview him as yeah. well, isn't it? Yeah. I think it gives you a higher chance of interviewing yeah. him as well. And a lot of the fans will want to hear some of these questions, yeah. if, you can, if you can address them to him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Quite a controversial. Yeah. So you're saying that Hayborn tried to airbrush those from the band's history? Well, not airbrush as such, but, you know, I've seen him live in, in, you know, a couple of times in the last 10 years, but those songs, you know, they're slightly different from the album, the debut album, they're slightly different, you know, they're different now from the material they're releasing. But then saying that, when I think about it, there's been a couple of sort of um, reworkings of those Tate Mira songs right. on um, As Above, As Below album. So, again, another, another, an another guy I'd like to sit down yeah. and, and pick his brains oh, about his time I'll definitely in take Angel Witch, one of my favourite bands, and him being, you know, the vocalist of my uh, favourite period of the band. Can we have that interview for Screen Rush Repeat? Yeah. In print, can we do that? Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll have yeah. that as well. What else? <laughs> Moving on, again, similar vein, uh, Aaron Stainford, vocalist of... Legend! Yeah, vocalist of uh, Bride. English Day Boom Band, My Dying Bride, who I've been a fan of since I saw the Symphonair video on MTV, Ed Bangs Ball, whatever it was back in the day. Right. Yeah, like yeah, you know, I was, I was intrigued by like the, the you know the Latin lyrics and Latin song titles and the visuals of the video, and it's just damn good I doom. Violins as well, they incorporate band. violins obviously into doom metal. So uh, you call them doom, don't you? I would say that they probably spearheaded that death doom. Yeah, fusion, you know, yeah, they're not they're sort of lost. Yeah, yeah, they're sort of death doom. Um, I haven't got that old, similar, yeah, like, again, like Iron Maiden, I've Hasn't got everything they've ever released, <laughs> different <laughs> versions, vinyls, I'd, I'd, I'd say they're my favourite band. Definitely my top ten, yeah. I love that yeah. band. Just I can help you with that the as The well. vocal, uh, sorry, the, the lyrics are, are so involved there, like, it creates characters and storylines and landscapes. I can help you know, accompanied by the, you know, the, the yeah. awesome music as well. Um, Again, I've, I've, I've followed his social media, you, you see interviews, he seems like a genuine down-to-earth guy who, who enjoys what he does and enjoys entertaining people with his, with his band's music and, and they're happy to share it. Legend. Yeah, as I say, I was, I've, I've interviewed him, so you can easily get that one. Okay. Uh, yeah, All and right. he's approachable on, on Facebook. I think that's cheating. Well, it's not my, he was on my list of ten, but because I've already done a discography review of My Day and Brian, all right, okay. It's like, so you, you're not allowed to help him, though. Yeah, come on. Yeah, I mean, you, you're friends with him on Facebook. Well, I, he I, will answer it. I, I, the guy, you know, the guy well, is. We said it's so a competition, but I, I think, you know, okay. We, you can, you can have group, that one bit of support. Uh, as a group, we'd be happy to get any of these. All right, yeah. Know, True. Yeah. You know, okay. But we'll, we'll, we'll see how this uh, this journey unfolds. So number five. Number five. five. Number five. Um, Johnny Five. Is again, alive? carrying on the theme. Just somebody I've been a big fan of for, for most of her career. This is this is a Ooh, lady. This is a lady. Uh, Liv Christine. Who? 
Liv Christine. Name she... rings a bell. No, she does. Well, she does. Norwegian. Norwegian. Um, best known for, well, that's how I, I don't know if you performed in any band before this, I, 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 a question to ask perhaps, but Theatre of Tragedy. Ah, Theatre Norwegian, of Tragedy. sort of gothic, yes. goth doom, goth, metic, uh, goth, doom metal band. Again, Gothmetic. Weirdly, uh, I know the name, Cosmetic, but I Gothmetic. can't. I don't recognise any of the bands. Very, very attractive, I blonde. I mean, it goes without saying if she's from Norway. If my wife's <laughs> watching, I have no idea what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Norwegian, <laughs> attractive and blonde. Blonde, yeah. no, no Not idea. Not as if they exist, is it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> great vocals, soprano, just mesmerising. I just, I mean, she's done solo stuff as well, which is, you know, you and class as even rock, but it's just, and some nice. theatre tragedy stuff is just piano and strings, and it's just beautiful, you know. That was, again, like my dying bride, the use of the, the sort of English language, sort of classic old English, you know, it's intriguing. Visuals as well, just the look of the band. Been on my list, I've just never got around to listen to him. Jordan Watson, the co founder of Screen Blast Repeat, they're one of his top desert island bands. Yeah. That, that's, I, I've just not heard any of the music. Yeah, I mean, sort of personal life is sort of in, entwined with her career. Um, you Did know. she sing with uh, Cradle of Filth on yes, Nymphetamine? Done, yeah, that's her. Oh, there you, Nymphetamine, isn't ah, it? Ah, fuck yes. On the swing. On the swing. Right, right. now, now I told that's you I knew who I wanted. That's a great video, yeah. yeah. That just was, okay. was going to bug me if I didn't find out what it was. Ah, right, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, I love that video. Yeah, I, I don't know video. the full Good story, you yeah. know, but she was, in my eyes, unfairly dismissed from theatre tragedy. Then she sort of uh, formed a band with, I think, her husband at the time, Leaves Eyes, similar vein, gothic metal with the sort of Beauty and the Beast vocals as they call it mm -hmm. and I think then that relationship finished and therefore her involvement in that band <laughs> and she's done various other things since but again big fan love her voice I, I long checkered career yeah. I'd be yeah. great to That'd be a find really out more about her as well yeah, so there time you time go there's, there's my sure. five got some Excellent. interesting ones in there yeah I, I think most of them are on the metal spectrum aren't they and hard rock well that's um, that's that's, that's my, what we listen to yeah, isn't it yeah Those it is i mean yeah. um you know another sort of friend of mine is, has got like a fan page for his group and uh you know that they have the post up saying guilty pleasures and i haven't really got any because no just listen you know, to i said bit, listen cy to bit of cypress hill there you go that's, <laughs> yeah. that's my guilty pleasure <laughs> otherwise it's, it's metal and rock all day long yeah yeah, I mean, my, my list is... No K-pop. ...is the same. No, no J-pop? <laughs> bit J-pop. I've seen the Vamps a few times with my daughter. <laughs> they're all right, they're pretty good. The Vamps? Never heard of them. No, I've, I've heard, heard the name. Yeah. We've heard of them. Uh, my to five. you now, yeah? Come so, on, Actually, the first one isn't a metal artist, but it's, they're in my all-time favourite band. Robert Smith. Robert Smith, here. you should have said. Yeah, we didn't know that Robert was coming. Robert Smith. Just an answer. Yeah. Absolute legend, uh, definitely a idol of mine. I honestly don't even know if I'd be able to interview him. I'd be so worth a track. Yeah, enthralled. Um, yeah, so I mean, that one is going to so, be very So, Cure, Cure well. obviously. Very dark music, isn't it? That's why I like it. Yeah, I mean, I know that they've done throwaway pop songs, which are really good. But See, I, I, I only know Love Cats. Love Cats and. Cats I'll find them quite depressing. That's why I, yeah, that's why I listen to it. If I, I'm going to see them in December. Music to sleep and I will, no, I is, hope, it, is, I it, is it that? Is it, is I that, it just, uh, definitely. The 1982 yeah. album, Pornography, is probably the darkest, most miserable album ever. That's the the band, is it? that the current, that's the, you know, lyrical content? What's, what's the music? Oh, very, very minimalist, post-punk. But they, they definitely had a big influence on post-rock when you listen to that 1987 album. Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me. Gothic, gothic rock. From the, they're synonymous with that, aren't they? The band, the image of the band, certainly yeah. rather. I'm similar. trying to feel like some of those songs I'm trying to think of. You're not fascination shit in lullaby. I'm sure that they did some interesting chord progressions as well. Yeah. They they they, they were not like your standard like E G C D sort of some thing. There, there, was, there was lots of like. Probably not quite as hard, weird just, chord yeah, progressions and stuff. Stuff. Yeah. The, the, the 1989 album Disintegration is a is a classic. Mm. Uh, okay. As universal. Class. Sounds good. Uh, number two, Mike Patton, Faith No More, Mr. Bingo. Oh, that'd be a good one. Legend. I like Mike Patton. Uh, diagnosed with agoraphobia last year, so don't know if that'll be easy to get an interview with him. Okay. L love the band, love the 1992 album. <laughs> I tend to be a doctor. <laughs> 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 I, I've always wanted to be um, and, and the thing is, it'd be very difficult, because I do have tendencies to be 
sycophantic with my idols and he certainly would not like that, you know. Just don't show him this before you yeah, show him. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Mike, I'll ask you some interesting questions if you're available. Uh, number three, I originally had Billy Corgan of the Smashing Pumpkins, but I think because I've got Robert Smith on there, and then it's just going to be very difficult in this game. So I've gone for another legend, Greg Pucciato of Dillinger Escape. Can you imagine one. if Billy Corgan actually saw this? I mean, I'd have done it. Easy. No worries, mate. <laughs> so I'm number six now. <laughs> no, no. Thanks, Kurt. Thanks. I, yeah. I didn't even make a top five. Well, God. I hope Greg, you're not even in my I top five either. Not put out by this, you know. Sorry, Greg, I've, I've drafted you in for yes. Billy Corgan. I uh, love the band Dillinger Escape. Right. Band. Really interesting artist. Just put out an excellent solo album which uh, we gave album of the week for screen by repeat mirror cell uh, one of the most intense performers i've ever seen live interesting lyricist all-round innovator and runs his own um, record company now as well so i don't know how easy it'll be to contact him number four absolute idol i keep using the word absolute i promise i won't use it anymore tom g warrior of celtic frost Hey, if you say absolute again, we could probably get sponsorship from that vodka company. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just put, a little, put an image up every time it says it. Yeah. The God Tom Father, G. Warrior, the okay, God go Father for of that. Extreme Metal, without Celtic Frost and Hellhammer, you wouldn't have Death Metal, Death Dean, Sludge Metal, even Grunge, all heavily influenced by, by his music, Never especially heard his guitar tone. I can't believe you're saying that. I, no. so I, have, I have heard of yeah. them. Yeah. Never listen to them. No, I mean, that's well, probably, I've never you, given David, them a chance. I don't get that. Why do you not like Elton Cross? I mean, you I don't, I don't know. I mean, I was, again, grew up with like the German thrash scene. Yeah. Destruction creators, Sodom. Just not so these Kelly were on Frost. your radar, you just never, you know. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know. Day. It's like that with me with Mastodon. I've just never got around to listening to it. I don't know why. Um, and okay. then, number five, uh, the prog metal band Periphery. And my, okay. yeah. my favourite contemporary band, I'm obsessed with them. And the singer, Spencer Sotelo, he's, he's, he is, in my view, the best current singer in, in metal. His range is phenomenal, his register is just indescribable. He's like a modern day Mike Patton, and his band just blow my mind. I, I just love their music. And he's not been on social media since 2017, so... I wanted, I wanted to interview him for that reason. Why, is he, why did he feel the need to, to pull away from that? Are the band still actively? I mean, it's yeah. not one I know, I must admit. Yeah, they've the, uh, got a new album yeah, coming yeah. out, uh, either at the end of this year or next year. Um, they released six albums in the 2010s, so to me, they were the best metal band of the 2010s. Not just because of the quantity, but the quality of their album as well. They are, you know, they take Meshuggah, they take Dillinger Escape Plan, uh, a bit of metalcore, pulse hardcore, so much going on in there, jazz fusion, love it. So, Spencer Sotelo is number five. And we've got our 15 nailed That's down. Our 15 challenges, okay. All right. So, so what do we do now? <laughs> I was just saying, well, what's, what's the next step? How, how what's well, we, the approach? We basically how, have just got to find a you're, way to You're the journalist, what, what, do, what do we do? Uh, so Reach out I, on social media? Well, that's, that's what I think we should go off and do. I think if we get to, we've got 12, let's say we're doing this over 12 weeks. Yeah. 12 episodes, so 24 weeks. Yeah, because we're going to do it over six months. Um, I think initially we should just go off and see what we can come up with on our own, about our own approaches. If we're struggling, I think at three months in, then we might need to give each other a bit of yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'm, I'm up for this being a bit of a competition here. Yeah. So What's like, uh, who can, like who can actually achieve? Yeah. yeah, like who can achieve the top five? Can, out, out of your five, how many can you actually get the interviews for? It's, I've got some ideas how I'm gonna deal with mine. Um, yeah. And I think what we'll do is we can share it with the viewers in, the, yeah. in our next episode about our, you'll share the footage about us, how we're going to approach it. So I don't know how it's going to be. That's probably just me um, sharing my uh, desktop screen and emailing people. But, just email, but no, email. Email. Oh, please, about me. Yeah. please talk to me. I'm a big fan um, of my music. <laughs> but I, I don't know, some of these guys might come back to us quite quickly. We might get the chance. Some people might get nothing back, but I'm... Um, I feel it'll be quite interesting to see what we can do. But also, I think what's also, also important, while we're here, we're in Hertfordshire, we're at the, we're at the Red Lion. Yeah, um, We're in Stevenage, it's a big metal scene. You know the metal scene probably in Hertfordshire more than anyone else. Um, actually, you know it pretty well as well. Yeah, not as much as, I mean, I've only been You know most of the bands and stuff years. like that, but I think it'd be You're good. Involved, right? be fair, yeah. I know a few of them now. Yeah, we're all involved, yeah. 
But I think it'll be kind of cool over the next 11 episodes is if we can get some of the people from the scene to come down, have a chat to us, talk about what's going on in their bands and stuff. Maybe get some local legends involved. Get their top five as well. That's some guaranteed footage anyway, isn't it? Yeah, Yeah. we'll we'll find something for you to watch. They they can tell us who their top five are, but we're not going to pursue it for them. No idea what that is. So we'll we'll wait and see what next week's episode looks like because... I guess we've got to go away and try and sort that out. It begins tomorrow. I've got a new laptop. I've downloaded OBS. So you're all ready. We've got to go and work out what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers for that. He's got to head start again. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and tuning in for this video. And we will see you in two weeks' time. Bye for now. See you later.